Feeling hella good, so let's just keep on dancing. Dun 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 Thank you. This is DJI goggles. A toilet seat, I mean FPV goggles that tracks your head. You can focus wherever you look. It has two 1920 to 1080 screens. It's like sitting in an IMAX movie theater. You like flying drones? Prepare for the best out of body experience. And here it is, DJI goggles. We've been waiting for this since the Mavic event in New York and it is finally here. The box is designed pretty nicely. You get greeted with goggles when you open the box. Goggles weigh 495 grams. It has two 5 inch screens inside. Each screen gives 85 degrees field of view and the total screen resolution is 3840 to 1080. Underneath that lies the headband, which weighs 500 grams, has 9440 mAh battery that gives goggles 6 hours battery life, has an adjustment wheel on the back, and it clicks into the goggles. The material inside the headband feels like a firm memory foam and it is very comfortable. It also comes with a charger, cable clip, HDMI cable, micro USB cable, cleaning cloth and manuals. Goggles also has gyroscope, accelerometer and proximity sensor. It has a micro USB port to transfer your files from the drone to goggles, HDMI type D, headphone in and micro USB ports. Goggles latency for Mavic is 110 milliseconds in 720p, 150 milliseconds for Phantom 4 series and 140 to 190 for Inspire 2. To put that in perspective, Phantom 4 Pro's latency on the remote is 220 milliseconds with a mobile device. 160 to 180 milliseconds with built-in display. We have the power button here, function button, back button. This hole right here is to link goggles to your device. And this is to adjust your interpupillary distance and this is a touchpad you can control this with one finger or two fingers and this is the ventilation holes of course now your payload is a little more and since the fpv glasses the goggles are not bendable it takes a little more space in your bag but it's not that bad I think it's fine. When you want to use the goggles for the first time, I'm going to tell you that it's going to be a little bit scary. There's going to be a lot of adrenaline rush. You definitely need someone to spot the drone. You may like to wear a hat. It makes it a little more secure on your head, but it's not necessary. You definitely need a spotter because if someone to come up and shove something in my mouth, I wouldn't know. Now, even though it's really bright outside, I can see clearly. This just feels unbelievable right now. I feel like I can go anywhere. Feels really comfortable on my head. That's what she said, of course. And this is the head tracking flight mode. Wherever I look, the camera points there. And if I look like this, the drone keeps on turning. If I look like that, the drone keeps on turning this way. Let's go back into that menu. Let's reset. And this is the head tracking gimbal mode. Now I cannot turn the drone with my head. But I can look wherever I want in the range of the gimbal. This can be a good option if someone else is wearing the goggles and you're flying the drone. Now let's go to intelligent flight modes. Now I can use tap to fly. And see that house there? That beautiful house. I'm putting that in the cross arrow and I'm gonna tap. 
and tap again. Now the drone is flying there. At this point, it's crucial to know where your pause button is. So I can pause this action and then turn around. I can also do active track and I'm making a rectangle. Now the drone is tracking me, but I cannot walk probably. <laughs> I didn't think this through. Okay, the drone, I can see where, where I can go like this. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see it in the camera. You can go to your left. There's plenty of sidewalk to your left. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For example, when we were whale watching, I wish I had this because it was impossible to see anything in the sun on the phone. And if I had something like this, I would have so much more control and it would be easier to track the whales with my head, with my mind. Now, Anjun is wearing the goggles. Stand there. Okay. Now we gotta go fly. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Feels like when we watch our Apple TV when it's on um, its screensaver. It's not making me dizzy either, which is weird. I would think it would make me really dizzy. And you see smooth. it's super bright under the sunlight, right? Yeah, everything's really crisp. It's really pretty. We're about to come to us, right? We're almost over us. I don't know, you yeah. tell me. That's us, there we are. You wanna control the camera with your head? Yeah. Two fingers down. Did you go into a menu? Yes. And on that menu with one finger, select head tracking and tap. I got it. I figured it out. Yeah, and then look left and right. See, you're turning the drone right now. The first flight is very exciting. Be very careful and then as you get used to it, it becomes a part of you and it is really easy to operate. It's just that the sensation of having your eyes locked, not knowing if, you know, if someone's laughing at you or being impressed by how cool you look actually. I'm sure, for example, this person thought I looked ridiculously handsome. Oh, Even yeah. though you Definitely. you see this much, Definitely. because the less you see my face, the handsomer I get. <laughs> now I'm gonna try and show you the screen. This is what the screen looks like, as you can see. With the touchpad, I can control, and when I tap, it is selected. It supports Mavic Pro, Phantom 4, Phantom 4 Pro, Phantom 4 Advanced, and Inspire 2. We can hit next. A spotter is required when you're using FPV. You hit, I understand you, Mr. DJI. Now let's hit next. Activation type. You can activate this with DJI Assistant app that you can download on your computer. Or you can use the mobile device. I want to use the mobile device. Wireless connection only works for Mavic and for Inspire 2, Phantom 4, Phantom 4 Pro and Advanced, you need to use a cable. Now I have my Mavic Pro turned on and to link this, I'm gonna hit next. I have to hit the linking button here and I have to hit the linking button down here. And they are linked, that's it. Now you can use the customizable buttons instead of the buttons under the goggles. Let's hit next. Also, you can use a 5D button instead of the touchpad. They are all really handy. And now it's time to start the activation. And activation is complete. You can use the goggles in smooth mode or HD mode. In smooth mode, the frame rate is more. In HD mode, the details are gonna be more. Confirm. There's a tutorial. You can adjust the size here. Place it on your face. And you can just push it like this. And the feeling you get with this is the screen is further away from your face. So it looks like you're in an IMAX theater. If you don't want to accidentally touch the control pad, you can use two fingers. Swipe backwards, you lock it. It's locked. If you want to unlock it with two fingers, you swipe forward and now it's unlocked. Now I'm going to try and show you focusing. When I hit this function button, 
Now it's tracking my head and wherever I look, I tap the touchpad and it's focusing there. If I go here and tap, it's gonna focus there. And once I'm done, I can hit the function button again and I'm out. So I'm swiping the touchpad with two fingers down to go into quick menu. And in this quick menu, we have these options. Let's say select head tracking. And if you wanna get out of it, you go back into that menu and you see it is highlighted. Go back and tap on the touchpad and it is deselected. So you're back to your regular FPV experience. On the main screen, you can use one finger to go through options on the right side of the screen, such as intelligent flight modes, general settings, and camera settings. Here we have tap fly, active track, terrain follow, tripod mode, and cinematic mode, and fixed wing. I can actually use these as well. And next, we have settings, automatic takeoff, HDMI input, playback, and live view. Here you can select either 720 at 60 frames per second or 1080p at 30 frames per second. Some functions are not available for some drones. For example, you cannot use the focus function with Phantom 4 because Phantom 4 has fixed focus. For wireless connection, the drone has to have OcuSync. At this moment, only Mavic has it. For Phantom 4, Phantom 4 Pro or Advanced or Inspire 2, you can use the micro USB connection. For live view, you can use the HDMI connection to anything that has HDMI out. Now, all of that is fantastic, but there's this one thing that I love doing with the goggles, and that is watching movies. As you can see, I have this really long HDMI to micro HDMI cable. I connect this end to Apple TV, and then this end to the goggles. And there you go, your own entertainment system. And if you like, you can hear the sound from here or you can connect your headphones and you can enjoy whatever you want to watch and wear your headphones on top of it. I think one of the things I love about DJI goggles aside from head tracking and other functions is how ergonomic it felt for me. Also the screen quality is amazing with most VR goggles you can count the pixels but with this one it feels like you're sitting in a movie theater. Also one other thing I realized is that when I took the goggles off I didn't feel disoriented or any need to rub my eyes. It feels very natural. For $449 it definitely brings a brand new perspective to drone experience. Literally. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that subscribe button. I must have a subscribe button somewhere here on the screen. Hit that subscribe button and play Ding Dong Ditch with the bell next to it and join the world domination. And please let me know what you think about DJI goggles in the comment section below. <laughs> and until I see the... Oh, there you are. And until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves and horse chocolate.